Hey guys, welcome back. Um, this is gonna be one of the first videos of this style on my channel, um, but I actually just recently took a poll over on uh, my Twitter account whether people would be willing to see a video like this talking about how I got into pen testing, uh, and it seemed like the overwhelming answer was that people wanted to see this, uh, so I wanted to go ahead and make a video. Also, quick plug, if you're not following me on Twitter, uh, I'll have that linked below so you can go ahead and check that out. Um, other than that, I wanted to jump right into this um, and provide some clarity, uh, some transparency, and hopefully some answers and maybe some tips and resources that you guys can use uh, as well to get into penetration testing. So I first wanted to start out with um, the path that I took. Um, and this is going to be a little bit on that certification versus degree topic. Uh, I want to be upfront. Um, I did go to college, so I do have a bachelor's of science uh, in computer science. Um, so I will be talking from somebody with that point of view. However, I don't think it's entirely necessary that you have a uh, degree to get into penetration testing. I know a lot of penetration testers without degrees um, and they learn the material just as fine. Um, I'll be talking from my experience. So I do have a, a degree in computer science. Uh, I think it has helped with some uh, topics and laid a foundation in learning some more um, advanced uh, um, style concepts in computer science, like understanding what data structures are, how they exist in computers, uh, learning things like assembly, uh, so on and so forth. Um, that has definitely helped me in that area, although I don't think it's entirely necessary. So I did have a um, degree in computer science, um, and then I did also get um, a couple internships during my time in college. So I worked at a small managed um, security service provider, an MSSP, um, for about two summers, two internships, um, where I worked on the vulnerability management team and then the governance risk and compliance team. So I worked a little bit on the uh, less technical side of cybersecurity on the uh, GRC, governance risk and compliance team, where we did a lot of uh, audits, framework, uh, frame, like things under NIST frameworks, um, SOC style frameworks, but I will say that helped me understand um, a lot of uh, processes and controls that go into security um, and definitely helped out there. On the vulnerability management side, um, both of the internships internships helped me a ton. Uh, this one was slightly more technical. I got to work with things like Nessus, run Nessus scans on demand, um, create presentations based on those outputs, um, things along that line. Um, and I thought that was super helpful and it's a great area to uh, get into if you're just starting. After I graduated college, um, I moved on and I joined a startup um, out of Silicon Valley in California um, where I worked as an information security analyst on the application security team. And that was good experience, but I worked more as a jack of all trades um, in security and uh, mostly blue team engineering work. So, you know, repairing uh, certs, installing new certs, building servers, um, things like, you know, running the annual uh, occasional pen, uh, penetration test for our um, software, um, things like monitoring SIM alerts, configuring um, SIM rules, um, things like that, uh, which was really, really good. Um, but what I really think solidified and got me into um, penetration testing was things that I did on my own accord. So self-study, things that are uh, widely available to everybody in the community because they're free and open. And those are um, some of the things that I want to touch on here. So the first one that I want to talk about is Hack the Box. Hack the Box is a um, great intermediate style, although they did just add um, the starting point, which is really, really beginner friendly. Um, and if you want to check those boxes out, I actually have a series over on my channel here of walking through those from scratch all the way to the end of the starting point track. So go ahead and check those out if you're interested in doing some penetration style like simulations on Hack the Box. Um, I do think Hack the Box is extremely helpful because it does simulate penetration tests um, and there's a lot of really great boxes and uh, really teaches you how to troubleshoot things on the fly because nothing's going to work the first time that you do it. So Hack the Box is awesome um, for learning the work ethic and the mindset that it takes to get into penetration testing and getting things to work. The second uh, 
utility that's used is TryHackMe. Um, and TryHackMe was really, really instrumental in the beginning of my penetration testing journey um, in learning these topics. So TryHackMe is really good at um, the hand-holding style of learning. So you have to be honest with yourself. If you don't know um, anything in security, TryHackMe is a great place to start. They'll help you from zero all the way to um, very knowledgeable pen tester. You can go from having no experience and doing these uh, rooms, they call them on TryHackMe, where you can answer every single question. They make sure that you're understanding each uh, step of the content, all the way to a uh, hack the box like simulated pen test environment in a different room. So you can really, really do some crazy things on TryHackMe and the skill, uh, skill vertical on that website um, is really, really helpful. So I would highly recommend TryHackMe. The third resource that I would really recommend is uh, Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. And even if you aren't super um, interested in web applications in particular for penetration testing, um, I could not recommend this uh, course set of labs enough. They're all free. You can do, I would say, over 95% of the labs with the free community edition of Burp Suite. Um, and it really is, um, it's foundational for all of the, uh, all the different web security vulnerabilities that are out there. Um, there's a different lab all the way from, you know, novice to expert style labs. So you can do things from like just a basic SQL injection to escaping sandboxes with cross-site scripting. So some really crazy and cool stuff. Um, so if you're super interested in it, you can go from zero to hero in one topic, uh, just in, you know, uh, however much time you're willing to put into it. But uh, it is that is one that I could not recommend enough because uh, so much of the attack surface today exists in web applications. Uh, and you will be so so much more of a well-rounded security professional uh, if you can speak to these topics very, very uh, clearly and uh, concisely. So that was one of the biggest ones as well. And then also, I do want to note of a couple other things that I thought were extremely useful. Uh, one of which is uh, participating in CTFs. Um, I had the opportunity to participate in some CTFs while I was in school. Um, one of them being uh, Rapid7 held one. Uh, the National Cyber League holds one every year for college students. So if you're in that, um, I also believe it's extended to high school students. So you might be able to sign up through your school as well if you're in high school. Um, Hack the Box now does a university CTF. I would highly recommend getting uh, in touch with um, some people if you are at college and getting a team together for that. Um, there's ones like for uh, total beginners, so like Pico CTF. Um, you can go again from like knowing nothing all the way up to some pretty crazy challenges on there. Um, that's one that I would highly recommend. In. But anything like this where you can uh, work through some challenges by yourself or you know with some teammates, just getting those uh, those gears turning, understanding what's going on, um, and documenting what you do. Um, I couldn't recommend enough uh, doing any of these uh, different resources and documenting what you do, um, whether that be through videos like this um, or writing a blog or um, you know maybe just keeping some notes and uploading it to GitHub. Uh, show that you're passionate about it. Show your uh, thought process and your mindset of working through these different resources. Uh, utilize everything that you're doing already. Um, be able to show that to a recruiter um, that you have the passion and the desire um, to do this full time. So yeah, so those were just a couple of my recommendations. Um, those were a lot of things that I did myself um, to get into the space. Um, I know it seems daunting at first that um, you know, it's such an intimidating area to get into. Um, there's some really, really intelligent people in this space, some of which that, you know, I don't even know a quarter of what they do, um, but I can at least share my own experiences and, and hopefully that helps um, at least a handful of people, um, you know, uh, get some opportunities that I might have had, I may have had just from you know, working through a lot of these open source things, maybe finding some uh, particular areas of security that you're interested in. Um, again, uh, if you 
are interested, um, I do uh, have an information security Twitter. Um, I would highly recommend starting up on Twitter if you don't have one, if you want to get into this space. Um, a lot of security researchers use that to publish different things, engage with different people, and you'd be super shocked um, what you can uh, what you can achieve and network just uh, with Twitter. Um, I was lucky enough to get my opportunity in penetration testing from a mutual Twitter follow follower. I had them reach out to me um, and uh, tell me to look into a program that they had at work, which is what I am now in um, while I'm pursuing this uh, penetration testing gig. Um, and it, it's um, pretty wild what you can what you can get done with uh, with knowing just a handful of people. So yeah, those were just um, a handful of things that I found useful um, for getting into penetration testing. I don't want to make this video too long um, so that no, you guys kind of start tuning out. Um, but if you guys have any other questions, um, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. Um, I'm super active over there. I, I love engaging with um, all these people that have maybe more questions. Um, I could even do a follow-up video. Um, please feel free to drop some uh, comments. Um, I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Um, Again, you'll reach me quicker on Twitter, uh, but thank you guys for listening, and I will uh, catch you in the next one.